Have you ever wondered when you should use for each versus count when creating multiple resources? That's what we're gonna answer in today's Terraform Tuesday. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to Terraform Tuesday. Today's topic is when to use count versus when to use for each. Before we get into that, I have two quick things I want to mention. One, if you haven't already checked out my Terraform Associate Certification Guide, it is freshly updated with new Terraform Cloud content, so definitely check it out. The link is down in the description. And that leads into the second thing, which is I'm about to publish my Getting Started on Terraform Cloud course on Pluralsight that should be publishing end of January, very early February, depending on when they can get all their ducks in a row, but the content's all done. And that really informed some of the updates in the associate exam guide because I learned a lot about Terraform Cloud while creating the Terraform Cloud course. How about that? That's just, just how it works. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about count versus for each. If you want to create multiple instances of a resource within a single configuration block with Terraform, there are two ways to do that. You can use the count argument or the for each argument. Why would you choose one versus the other? That's what we're going to try to answer in this episode. Now, count actually predates for each. Before Terraform 0.12, count was all we had. And then 0.12 introduced for each. So before we figure out when to use which, let's understand more about how the count argument actually works. We'll start by looking at a very simple example of how to use the count argument. And if you want to follow along, these files are available on my Terraform Tuesdays repository. The link should be up now. The directory we're working in is the 2022-01-25 count and for each directory. I'll expand that. And we're working in the count underscore int subdirectory. Let's take a look at what's in the main.tf. Okay, so the syntax for this, we're going to create multiple instances of a local file resource called count int loop. And count takes an argument value of an integer. It has to be an integer. In this case, we're doing three. So we're gonna create three instances of this local file. Now, what's the content of that file? Well, in the content argument, we have this is file number count.index. What's that? That's a special expression for count that tells you what iteration you are on for creating these resources. And it starts with zero. So it would be zero, one, two. And then the file name is going to be int dash count.index.count. If we look over in the directory, we see we have int dash one, dash two, and int dash zero, dash one, dash two. Okay, so that worked. Obviously the files worked. If we look inside the first file, it says this is file zero. Okay, excellent. That's what we would expect. Now, what does this actually look like from a data structure standpoint? Let's take a look at the Terraform state. So we'll do Terraform state list, and that shows us three resources, and they all have the same beginning, local file.count int loop. And then the index is an integer. So we have what is basically an ordered list, and it is referable by integer. If we want to know more about it, interestingly, the local file count int loop is an object all on its own. So we can go into the Terraform console. There we go. And let's take a look at the count int loop object. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it down below. And when we do that and scroll up a little bit, the first thing you see is a square bracket and that denotes that this is a list. So we have a list of objects. And the only way to refer to an element in a list is by its index number. So we have zero, one, and two. If we want to get just the contents of one of them, then we could grab this whole expression with the square bracket and number two for the index. I'll paste that down here. And now it gives us just one entry out of that list. So this is important. When you use a count argument, what you get back is a or an ordered list of objects and each object is an instance of that resource. Okay, so <laughs> this is relevant and we will come back to that in a moment. Now, like I said, before Terraform 0.12, count was all you had. So what if instead you passing an integer, you had a list of things that you wanted to parse? How would you go about that? 
All right, let's close this out and go into the next one, which is toppings. Let's say I had a list of toppings that I wanted to create a file for each topping. I know it's a little, uh, little funky, but that's what we're going with. In that case, we still need an integer for our count argument. The way that we could do that is with the length function, which looks at the number of elements in a list and returns back the integer. We have three toppings, lettuce, tomatoes, and jalapenos in our local.toppings object, so it's gonna return three for the count. Okay, and then for the content, we're going to make the content just the name of the topping, and the way that we get that value is because local.toppings is a list, we can use the count index value to pull out each item from that list. So the content for the first one will be lettuce, and the file name will be lettuce.count. And sure enough, if we look over in toppings, there's lettuce.count, and if we look in lettuce.count, it has the value lettuce. Clearly we can deal with a simple integer and we can deal with a list of items. So what is the utility behind the for each? Why was that even introduced? There's two important reasons. One is consistency and the other one is references. So let's take a look at consistency first by adding a new item to our toppings. Remember that the object that is returned by using the count argument is an ordered list of objects. Let's say we add a new topping to our list. I'm going to add onions to the list. There we go. And you notice I didn't put it in at the end of the list, I put it in the middle. What do you think is gonna happen when I run a Terraform plan? Well, let's, let's go into that directory. That was toppings. <laughs> and let's run a Terraform plan to see what happens. Terraform plan is going to say two to add and one to destroy. Wait, why is it destroying anything? I just added something. Shouldn't it simply add one thing? Hmm, well, let's see what's going on. Looking at the first thing, it says that the resource in index two has to be replaced because the content has changed. It's gone from jalapenos to onions. And strictly speaking, that is true. We updated our list from lettuce, tomatoes, jalapenos to lettuce, tomato, onions, and jalapenos. So onions replaced what was in index two. So that is going to force it to destroy the existing local file and create a new one for onions. And then it's going to see now there's an index three. Oh, well, that means I need to create a file and it's going to recreate the file jalapenos. So that's fine. Let's, let's go ahead and apply that. But ideally, that's not what you want to do. It doesn't matter so much here because all we're doing is creating and destroying files. No one's really using this. But if you had a Kubernetes cluster or a set of Kubernetes clusters and you took down one that was running 100 applications because you added another cluster in the middle instead of at the end, that could be really bad. Okay, so order really matters when it comes to using count because of the ordered list that it generates. Now let's take a look at how for each works. So here is my for each example. And I'll go ahead and uncomment it. For each takes one of two arguments. It can either be a set of strings or it can be a map. In this case, we're going to pass it a set of strings, which is local.toppings. And since local.toppings is actually a list and not a set, we're gonna use the to set function to turn it into a set. What's the difference? A set is an unordered list and all the elements have to be unique. That's what makes it a set. So if we had duplicates in there, it would narrow it down to one, and it also gets rid of the ordering. Now, as the for each goes through, it introduces a new set of expressions you can use, each dot key and each dot value. If we, since we're using a set of strings, each dot key and each dot value are the same for each as it iterates through. If, you, if we passed it a map, then each dot key would be the key of the map and each dot value would be the value corresponding to that key. Hopefully that's not too confusing. So basically it's going to iterate through in the same way. The content will be each dot value. So it should be the tomatoes, lettuce, onions, and jalapenos. And then the file name will be those same objects dot for each. So let's go ahead and apply that now. It's going to create four files since we have four entries and oh it helps if i actually save 
<laughs> we try saving that, and now it's going to create four files. We'll say yes, and if we look to the left, we now have dot for each files for dot for each files for all of our objects. If we look inside one of those files, jalapenos, fantastic. Now, what is the data structure that for each uses, and how is that different from count? All right, so let's look at Terraform state list. And down at the bottom, we now have four for each loop entries. And instead of a numbered index, it's a string. Hmm, that's interesting. How is it using that string? Well, let's go into Terraform console and take a look at this local file for each loop. So I'll go ahead and highlight that and paste it down here. And if we scroll up to where it starts, interesting, it has a curly brace, which means that this is a map. When you use a for each argument, what it actually creates is a map of objects or a, a map where the key is the string from the set or the key from the map that you gave it. And then the object or the value for that key is going to be each instance of the resource. So we have jalapenos here and it tells us what the content is, all the properties of our resource. This is pretty cool because if I want to refer to a specific instance like jalapenos, the way that I refer to it is by doing jalapeno, uh, by adding the key at the end. So all I have to do is square brackets jalapenos and that returns back that single object to me. Okay, so from a consistency standpoint, when I use for each and I add another item to my map or my set, it doesn't impact any of the other objects because I'm not using, because it's not creating an ordered list, it's creating a map. So order is irrelevant in that case. Now, the other thing that is a little bit easier is if you want to refer to these objects somewhere else in your code. So let's talk about references. Let's say within my code, I want to reference a specific instance of a resource that was created by a count loop or a for each loop. How would I go about that if I wanted the jalapenos resource from my count loop? Well, I'd have to use a for expression with a filter. That's like the easiest way to do it. Let me show you what that looks like. So I'll go ahead and open up, where is that file? Console commands. So here's the command. This is basically what it looks like. We we're doing four items. So get me all the items in local file dot count loop, and then return to me the item if the item dot content equals jalapenos. And this will work if we go ahead and copy this and paste it down below. It returns one item in a list format, and it is in fact jalapenos. So great, I got back the thing I was looking for, but it was kind of convoluted. And think about this, in our case, we have four items in our list. It doesn't take long to parse through. But what if we had 3,000 items in our list? That's a lot of CPU cycles Terraform has to burn through to find one item. Now, how do I refer to that same individual item if I use the for each arguments? Oh, look, I just do local file for each loop jalapenos and copy and paste that. Boom, we already saw that it gets the item right away and that's because it's a map, which is kind of like a hash table or a dictionary in Python. And that means it is much, much faster to find a single item and refer to it and get access to all of its properties. So for consistency and for references, for each kind of wins, but there still are some cases you want to use count. Let me talk about those now. The first reason you probably still want to use count is something we already covered. If your argument value is going to be an integer and the resources it creates aren't something that you want to refer to somewhere else in your configuration, then use count. It's simpler, it's easier to do, it's cleaner to read. Go ahead and use count. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. The other reason you might want to use it is for conditional creation of resources. So let me show you what that looks like. Down here, we have a locals value called create file, currently set to false. And then we have a local file resource called count optional. And you'll note in the count argument, I have a conditional expression here. I can make the creation of this local file optional by setting the count equal to zero. Terraform just won't create any, it will create zero instances. So the conditional expression goes the condition local.create file, which is currently false, 
If it's true, make one, create one instance. If it's false, create zero instances. So very simply, I can make the creation of this local file optional, depending on what I set create file to. Can you do the same thing with for each? Absolutely you can, but it's a little more convoluted to look at. So we use the same condition, local.create file. If it evaluates to true, I'm going to create a list with one string in it and create and then use the to set function to make it a set. And if it's false, I will create an empty set essentially. And it will function exactly the same as the count, but it's not as intuitive to look at and understand. So I would definitely lean towards using count in this particular case instead of for each. Okay, what did we learn today? Uh, let me summarize it really quickly. If you're using a count argument, the data structure that's created is going to be an ordered list of the instances of your resource and you get to it using an index. If you use the for each argument, what's generated is a map data structure where the keys are either going to be the values from the set of strings or the keys from the map you submitted to the argument. And then the values is going to be the instances of the resource. You would use count if your argument is going to be a simple integer and you don't care about the individuality of the resources that you're creating. They're undifferentiated and you're simply creating them with an integer. Or if you're doing conditional creation of a resource, count works for you. If the data structure you submit for the argument is going to be anything other than an integer, then chances are you're going to want to use the for each argument. That is gonna do it for this Terraform Tuesday video. Two quick things. Number one, if you haven't checked out Anton Babenko's weekly.tf Terraform newsletter, I highly recommend it. The content is fantastic. And he also has a really good YouTube channel. So I'll throw links for those down in the description. And if you have enjoyed this content and you think I earned it, why don't you subscribe to the channel? Maybe even like it, I don't know. It could, could be nice. That's gonna do it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. Okay, so here's a weird thing. Until I was in my mid twenties, I didn't realize that wet naps were short for wet napkins. I thought it was like a wet nap, like napping while damp. And that made me feel all weird and icky inside. So I never wanted to use wet naps because of the connotation that it reminded me of. And even after I found out it was short for wet napkins, I still get a little squeamish about them. So that's my weird thing. Enjoy.